Five-star prospect Greg Brown chose to follow in his family's footsteps and commit to the University of Texas. But despite an up-and-down season, what we've seen from Brown so far may not truly reflect his value at the NBA level. Rather, we may have to read between the lines. This is floor and ceiling. Let's break him down. Greg Brown's father, mother, and uncle all played sports at the University of Texas, but it was still a little surprising to see Brown turn down a six-figure offer from the NBA G League to play in Austin. Now, Brown has a chance to join the likes of Tristan Thompson, Miles Turner, and Jared Allen as bigs to be drafted in the first round out of Texas. Brown is a gifted athlete, 6'9", 205 pounds, with a 6'11 wingspan. Shake together his athleticism, flashes of shooting, and penchant for highlight plays, and you've got a promising cocktail. But with Brown, you have to take the bad to see the good. On offense, Brown is a mixed bag. You know what he's going to do on most trips down the floor, but whether it's going to work or not is very much in the air as he does it. Brown is right-handed, but he loves to do what you'll see over and over in the following clips. Brown will catch on the perimeter and attack off the dribble going left, almost never going right. I'm genuinely curious as to why that is. Brown is also uncomfortable playing through contact on drives. As you'll see later, there's no reason why this should be the case. Brown is definitely on the skinnier side at 205 pounds still, but there's times when he shrinks at the slightest touch from the opposing defender. Brown is also prone to playing out of control and turning the ball over too much. There are times where he'll barrel through defenders and pick up a charge. Right now, Brown is more of a straight line driver, rather than someone who can change directions. However, there are definitely times when you realize Brown's potential off the catch. It's nice to see a right-handed player be so comfortable with his left hand at the college level. And like I said before, Brown has a strong first step to get to the basket. When Brown can clear out a path to the rim for himself, he has the ability to get from the three-point line to the basket in just a couple of dribbles. And when Brown is brave, he can use these drives to earn trips to the free throw line. Brown has the potential to be a mismatch either on flat-footed bigs or smaller players, and sometimes the result is a huge poster such as this. Like I said at the top of the video, Brown's offense is pretty predictable. We've already seen his drives going left, so all that is left, coincidentally enough, is his three-pointer. About 45% of Brown's shots come from beyond the arc, but he is only making threes at a 30% clip. Brown has a funky shot, essentially catapulting the ball over his right shoulder to release the ball. He usually steps into his shot in rhythm, but he doesn't always hold his follow-through or land on balance. A lot of the threes that Texas creates for Brown are easy shots. Because the guards command a lot of attention, Brown takes plenty of open spot-up threes that he really needs to convert more of. I would not be surprised if there were considerable tweaks to Brown's shot either once he's in the NBA or when he leaves Texas to prepare for the draft. Keep in mind that in addition to 30% from 3, Brown only makes about 65% of his free throws. Brown doesn't have much success pulling up off the dribble either. He likes this little pull up after the drag back dribble, but it hasn't come off for him just yet. I wonder how much having to bring the ball over his right shoulder every time affects Brown's shot. That's not to say that Brown cannot make threes, but when he does, he's usually on a hot streak or he's holding his follow through. Brown's three point shooting is still too inconsistent, although his numbers have gotten better over the course of the season. An overlooked part of Brown's offensive game is his movement off the ball. Brown is pretty good at finding little openings in opposing teams' defenses and exploiting them. I especially like when Brown is stationed in one of the corners, as that gives him plenty of space to operate. Once Brown gets going, he's hard to stop, as we can see with this massive poster dunk. Texas have the guards to find Brown when he starts moving. Here he attacks the paint aggressively, and even though the dunk doesn't come off, Brown gathers his own miss and flushes it regardless. 
Brown's movement and activity level also comes into play when he's rim running. Brown has the potential to be an elite rim runner, outspeeding his opponents down the floor and finishing with ease. Brown is able to finish these plays with big dunks or acrobatic finishes, even though Texas hasn't used him much in this capacity. Another way that Brown makes an impact is with his offensive rebounding. Brown is an elite athlete with a powerful leap and long arms. He knows how to use this to his advantage, racking up about two offensive rebounds per game. Brown times his jumps well and smothers the ball in traffic to give Texas second chance opportunities. Over the course of the season, I think that Brown has shown some defensive promise. His defensive rating is quite good and he gets over a block per game. Brown is at his best when he uses his length to his advantage, much like with his rebounding. On the ball, Brown has the means to truly bother defenders with his wingspan and lateral quickness. Shooting over his outstretched arms is complicated, as we can see here when Cade Cunningham has his drive sent back by Brown. Brown's length is also useful off the ball. I have real faith in Brown as a disruptor around the rim. He makes things happen at the basket on the defensive end of the floor, and he's capable of coming up with big blocks or just putting fear into defenders. Even when Brown doesn't get the block, he still affects opponents. Here, Brown first forces the pass from the guard, who can't finish because of his length, and then he is quick to recover and also bother the subsequent shot attempt. However, Brown can sometimes be a little bit rash on D. In a way, he needs to get better at being less obvious when fouling. Here, Brown is looking for the block but brings his entire upper body into the play and commits a clear foul. In transition against Oklahoma, Brown is keeping up with the play but then very obviously swings his entire arm down and once again gets called for the foul. Or here, he is far too handsy and makes it noticeable from the get-go. Brown is still looking to find the balance between being annoying and being disciplined on defense. He has the tools but he is yet to put them together. Brown has fouled out twice this season and is yet to have a game where he commits less than two fouls. When he's had to get physical, the results have not been great either. Brown is too slender. Attackers can go into his chest, displacing Brown and finishing over him. At some point in the video, I'm sure you found yourself wondering, well, what's the big deal about Greg Brown? He can't really shoot it, he can't really drive on a consistent level just yet and his defense looks good, but it's still just potential. So what is it about him besides him being a big time athlete? And to be fair, I shared your concerns for a long time too. But the more I watched of Greg Brown, the more I became convinced that he is a very good NBA player, or at least has the potential to be, in a different role to the one that he had at Texas. For a direct comparison, think about Precious Achua at Memphis, and then think of him in the NBA, where his role at Memphis was to do everything, or at least maybe he thought that he could do everything, but now for the Miami Heat, his role is very much simplified. He runs the floor hard, he defends with purpose, he cleans up about around the rim, and that's about it. I think that Greg Brown, if he follows that same development path, he can become someone in that mold of Achua who is a freak athlete that can do everything around the rim, both offensively and defensively, who can run the floor hard. And then once he's able to do that, he can expand the rest of his game, meaning that maybe, yes, he might be able to put the ball on the floor eventually. Maybe he'll be able to be a very good three-point shooter because he does have some touch, even if his mechanics need reworking eventually. Maybe he'll be able to do all of those things. But for now, I think he really needs to hone in on the little things. And if he does that, there's no reason to think that he doesn't have a very good NBA future ahead of him. And with that reasoning in mind, I could perfectly make a case for picking him in the lottery. As always, make sure to leave your comment below, telling me what you think of Greg Brown, telling me if you agree with me on this role that I propose for him. And as always, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.